welcome to the Pioneer Village, the old, I call it the old frontier, amen, of the Gonzalez Historical Foundation, which is greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the new home of the True Vine Community and Non-Denominational Church of Gonzalez, Texas. Like always, Jesus Christ is the head of this church. I am the under shepherd. I'm Pastor M. L. Calvin. Grace, mercy, peace, and love be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's just good to be back here in the house of prayer and worship. It's just good to be back in God's presence. I want to thank God for another day's journey. Thank God for allowing us to come back out and to kick it one more time. Amen. With Pastor Calvin. We have our friend back with us. Amen. The young pastor, Reverend Akadot. He's going to kick it with us today. It's always good to Amen. Have him with us, El Brazil. Amen. Every time I, I have a minute to thank, I always put him in my mind. And he's doing an outstanding job. Amen. We want to thank God for him. Right. And, and we're glad to have him back. And we got a pretty good Bible discussion. And we don't know exactly how the Lord is going to uh, bring this out. But we do know one thing he's going to bring it out of us. And we hope and pray to God. I tell you what, we're going to give you a minute. Those of you that's going to tune in on our website, or might go by YouTube, go get your Bible and, I, and you go with us. We're going to the book of Joshua, chapter 6, beginning with verses 1, and we're going to read until the Holy Spirit says stop. And after we read the scripture text, we're going to, we're going to come back, we're going to break it down, Brother Pastor, uh, we're going to discuss it verse by verse, word by word, because I do believe, amen, God is going to pull something out of us that we probably haven't really thought of. That's what I love about the Word of God. Amen. You can study it, you can study it, you can study it, but God always has that moment that He reaches deep down in our soul and pull out the hidden things that we don't know. Amen. That's what makes the Bible study so interesting. So I, I gave you a minute to go get your Bible to go along with us. Amen. And then we're going to come back and we're going to read our scripture text. And then Elder Brazil is going to open us up with a word of prayer. Amen. He, He's faithful. He's been with me over 10 years, and I want to thank God for the cameraman who's continuing to be faithful. Amen. He worked hard. I work him hard, and amen. I can see the frustration on him sometimes, but that's the price you have to pay when you're working with the Lord. Everybody thinks it's peaches and cream. Amen. Just because we sat up sometime on Sunday morning with a three-piece suit on, a two-piece suit on, white shirt and tie, you think it's easy sailing. But it's not easy sailing. It's not as easy as people think it is. It's, not. it's a mind thing. Amen. It's a mind thing. Amen. And if you're not wrapped up, tied up, amen, and tangled up in the Lord, well, then you just ain't going to make it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to ask you to open us up with a word of prayer. And then after that word of prayer, uh, we're going to... I'll come back and we're going to read our scripture text and we're going to see what the Lord has to say in the book of Joshua. Amen. Mm -hmm. What's your issue? Right there, right there. That's right there. Let's start right there. Let's yeah, thank you, Lord. For thank you. Loving kindness and tenderness. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, for all that you have done for us. Yes. Oh, Lord, he must to give us a mind. Mind, Lord. That you want to show you. Lift up your name in every way of our understanding. We want to thank you for thank you so Lord. much, Lord. Thank you for all that you do for us. Even much how you preserve us and are going out, preserve us and are coming in. Coming for in. all the things that you just done for us, Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord. We just come with worship. We didn't come with praise. Lord, we didn't come and give an honor to you. And just thanking you for being so mindful of us. Lord, we want to thank you over and over again. Lord, we just ask you just to come on in and just. Have your way, Lord, in our lives. We ask it all in your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For that prayer. Amen. Now, in the book of uh, Joshua, Amen, beginning with chapter 6 and verse 1, it reads as follows. Now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thee thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of all. Verse 3, And you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. Verse 4, And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets, 
you shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a loud, a long blast with the ram horns, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall flat down. I want you to take note on what it just said. And the wall shall fall flat down. It didn't say anything about crumbling down. It said flat down, flat down. Amen. So let's, let's, let's amen. keep our, our thought on them. And the wall of the city shall fall flat down. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Verse 6, and Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant. And, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram horn before the ark of the Lord. And finally, and he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. We'll stop right there. Amen. Obedience, Obedience. is better than a sacrifice. Yes. Amen. A lot of times we don't want to obey. Amen. Even when I was coming up as a young preacher, going through school, going through seminary, I, I had a, a problem following the instructions, especially the first year of my seminary. But as I went on and went on and on, I learned that if you don't be obedient, then God can't bless you. Okay. Amen. Amen. You, 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 you got to be obedient. You, you got to you got to humble yourself. You got to learn how to humble yourself. And, and, and if you don't learn how to humble yourself, the road is going to be long and it's going to be lonely. But if, if, if you learn to be obedient and, and listen to uh, instruction, then I do believe, Brother Pastor, that everything is going to be all right. And I'm looking at this passage in the scripture here. Well, the Lord has told Joshua that he was going to give him the city. Amen. And he, they were all, he told Moses long years ago that he was going to lead the people to the promised land. Amen. And getting to the promised land wasn't easy. And the reason why I'm going back to Moses to try to bring this, to bring this update a little bit, Moses was obedient. Amen. Now, I didn't read too many times in, in, in the Old Testament writing of Moses where he disobeyed God. Now, if he did disobey God, I didn't quite see it in my studies, but Moses didn't have no problem obeying God. But the children of Israel was the one that disobeyed God. It took them 40 years to get to the promised land. And, and, and everybody just want to ask a person, uh, you and Brother Pastor, why did it take the children of Israel to get to, get to the promised land? Why did it take 40 years? Anybody ever got it? I, I think that it, it took so long because, because of the disobedience. Disobedience. I mean, you know, one, one thing that we can look at in our own lives is it, it was hard for this being, being obedient is not an easy thing. Okay? There's things that frustrate us with obedience, mm -hmm. but it's a lifestyle that we have to learn to live. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that we have to choose to go by. And, and God gives us that choice. He says, you can follow my word. You can be obedient to what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. Or you can go your own way. And, and the children of Israel, you know, they had their minds set already. And with them being uh, slaves, they didn't want to go out here and have nothing. They, they saw that they had food. They had things that they needed while they were slaves. But now they're out in the desert and they don't see anything. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that God is going to come through for them. Yeah. So, so he had to leave them out there a little bit longer just, just for them to, to believe, to separate those who believe and those who didn't. Right. And, and, and being uh, disobedient to God, this is not a new thing, is it? No, it's not new. It was, it, this, this thing, being disobedient, always played in, into man's heart, hasn't it? For God, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Man always has been disobedient toward God in the beginning, and it's going to be in the ending. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, it's going to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's just something, it's just something about not obeying God. It just seems like man thrives on, oh, I, he's going to love me anyway, so he's going to save me anyway, so I, I'll do as I please. That's 
that's not what that's about. Because you remember, let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Amen. That's where it originated from. Yes. Amen. Being disobedient, because he simply told Adam, and I, if, I, if I read my scripture text right, I believe before even before Eve came on the scene, before he created her and gave her to him, Adam already had the instructions, didn't he? Yes, he did. I do believe he all, yes, God told him that, you know, you are free to, you know, eat every every tree of the garden, but there's one particular tree in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat thereof, thou shalt not touch it, because in the day that thou do it, thou shalt surely die. Now, he was told that. Yes, he was. Now, what happened? He disobeys. He disobeys. Amen. Yes, Amen. But a lot of people say, well, he didn't disobey until the devil came on the scene. Well, even before the devil came on the scene, he what? He had some man. Yes, it is. So it's something, what I'm, I'm trying to build a foundation here. It's something about man that that just disobedient toward God for whatever reason. That's what keeps man in trouble. And, and, and I'm so glad. Amen. Looking at this passage of scripture that we just read in, in the book of Joshua, where the children of Israel, for the first time in a long time, they was what? They were together. They were obedient. They were obedient. They, amen. This time, they listened to the voice of God. They listened to the word of God. They listened to Joshua's instruction. And when they did that, everything else worked out just fine for them. Amen. When God told them how to take the city, and when God told them what to do when they took the city, everything worked just fine. Yes, amen. So, obedience is what? Better than a sacrifice. Better than a sacrifice. Amen. Yeah. So we, we're going to uh, look at the scripture text. We're going to read it verse by verse, word by word, and, and, and see what the Lord really wants to say for the next few minutes. Now, I'm not going to do all the talking. I'm going to usher this young pastor, preacher. Amen. He's going to, amen, lead the way for me. I'm going to follow the instruction. Amen. 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 I'm going to follow the instruction. Now, Jericho was strictly shut up. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. Amen. But Pastor, what kind of city was that? Well, it, it was a city where everything was, was set to the way the king wanted everything in Jericho. He ran everything. Everybody had to look to him for whatever it was they wanted or needed. Everybody had to look to the king. And he didn't want that to change for anything. <laughs> he didn't believe in the God of Israel. Uh, the God that the children of Israel served, and he didn't want them bringing their God into his city. Mm -hmm. So, so he, as it says that, it says it was securely shut up. Mm -hmm. So he, he had guards all around, yeah. all around this fort, and he was making sure that nobody from Israel would get into his kingdom. I heard you use the word fort. Yeah, it was fortified. Fortified. Yeah, yeah. It was a city. It was, it was, it was a, I remember coming up watching TV, watching cowboys and Indians, where the Indians used to attack the fort with the war and arrows. It was hard for them to get in because the city was what? Fortified. It was elevated. Yeah, and, some, and, and I was reading the commentary where sometimes the wall of Jericho stood 18 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Those are some big walls that you had to get over. Mm -hmm. So it was well fortified and it was well secured. To get into that city, you really had to get into the city. And it was hard to get into the city. So they needed divine help. Yes, they did. Amen. Because you couldn't get into that city. They needed divine help. They, they, needed. Got, they, got, that, they got that help through Rahab. <laughs> they got that help through Rahab. Lord <laughs> well, have mercy. When, 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 when God secures something, he's the only one that can unsecure it. Yes. Amen. Now, for a while now, they were protected pretty good. Mm -hmm. But I stopped by to tell us, I don't care how fortified you are, I don't care how strong you are, or how much armor you got, that's go life. He was fortified pretty good, buddy. Yes, Amen. He had a good shield and armor on him yes, to protect him from the enemy, didn't he? Yes, he did. But he forgot a little old bitty rock got through his armor mm -hmm. and took him down. Yes. So what I'm, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. Mm -hmm. And the bigger the walls were, the harder they fell. Amen. Amen. Don't take my word. Well, let's read a little bit more. I, I, and something to go along with that. I'm pretty sure with this city being so secure uh, that, that the men who were on the walls, they had they had the best equipment oh, to make sure that they would be able to fight off any invaders. Yeah. All they saw as invaders. Huh. Whereas the children of Israel, I mean, with them being out in the wilderness, they didn't have a whole lot of material to work with. Right. And that, that, that goes to... To, to have you dressed on the inside. Mm. They were dressed on the inside with God's strength. 
Yeah, it, it wasn't by what man created to keep keep them from uh, keep others from being able to, to to kill or destroy. They weren't gonna kill or destroy the spirit of God. Right. So 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 uh, the city of Jericho, they was well qualified, well prepared physically. Yes. Physically, they were ready to go, mm -hmm. but spiritually, they were no match for the children of Israel. Not spiritually. Oh. Oh, good grace the mighty. I'm, I'm telling you, the Lord is getting ready to bring this out. See, the enemy can come at you physically. Mm -hmm. But if you are God, he can't defeat you spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit, what? It lasts throughout eternity. Mm -hmm. And see, a heaven holy oh, Lord, that was it. And, and that's the thing that God wants us to do. He wants us to build our spirit. And how do we build our spirit? By obeying. By being obedient. By obeying his word, man. Mm -hmm. Once we build that spirit up, it's, it's, it's barely anything that can get through. Only God can penetrate that which he's built. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Amen. So it seems to me what you're saying, Brother Pastor, once upon a time, the, the, the city of Jericho had God's favor. Now, it, 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 it really didn't say it, but I'm reading and trying to use my spiritual mind. Once upon a time, to be as qualified as they were, they must have had God somewhere around them. Well, they were well protected. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can be well protected like that, God has to play in it some kind of way. Yes. Amen. To, to, to give man that kind of uh, wisdom and knowledge to build such a fortified city. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you, you ever been to the Astrodome? Yes. You ever seen that big, huge, beautiful place? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Now, all the people inside of that, they fortified. They fortified. They protected. Uh -huh. Now, do, what was that when the hurricane? Was that in New Orleans? That was Superdome. A Superdome. Yeah, that true. And now, as strong as that hurricane was, it didn't take it all the way down. It held off long enough until the storm blew over. Yeah. But if you look back at it, it still stood. Yeah. That's the kind of fortified that this city of Jericho had. Mm -hmm. It was strong. And where did that come from? It had to come from God Almighty. Mm -hmm. So, Oh, once upon a time, they must have had some kind of knowledge of God, like we all do, we turn our back on God. So somewhere down the line, they must have turned their back on God and gave Israel the strength and the know-how to take the city. Oh, God, have mercy. Amen. Oh, no, 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 mercy. Hey, praise God. I'm through talking. Amen. Amen. So, so what, what else you got? You got another thought? Amen. Well, going into that verse 2, the Lord said to Joshua. Oh, yeah, on Jeremiah. Jericho, yeah. Jericho, six, 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 six and two. Jeremiah, Jericho. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Jericho, right? Joshua. I thought you had it, yo. I had Jericho. I had Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah, Joshua, Joshua. You're on Jericho, right? No, Joshua. Joshua, Joshua. Okay, well, what verse what you said, brother? The Lord said to Joshua, see. I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. Now, now, he said he had given Jericho in his hand. Okay, Joshua did everything that the Lord asked, asked him to. Every, everything that, every command that the Lord gave him, Joshua did. Amen. And, and by him obeying what the Lord told him, they were able to get over the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this Jordan River, it wasn't something that they were just, they were just going to get through easily. I mean, the Lord had to part it just like he parted the Red Sea. Amen. For them to get into a, a, a position to take the city of Jericho. Amen. He, he showed them, okay, I, I brought you across the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. And I put you in position right now to take this city. I've given it to you. Yeah. I've given it to you. Right. And sometimes I, I think we 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 don't we don't look at what it is that God really gives us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't use what God gives us. Because we, why is that? Sometimes we don't use what God gives us because we're trying to follow our own commands. Now, I'm glad you said that. But look, it's not, it's not, we got one thing pictured in our mind the way we want it yeah. and not the way God wants it. Yeah. And that's what we lose out of heaven, you say? Yes. Hey, Lord have mercy. Yes. We, we, become, uh, we become obedient to the world and we become obedient to our own thoughts yeah. where we start to push God at. Push, push them out. And we, 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 we feel like we've got to the point where I can do this on my own. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to know that we can, we can never do it on our own. We can never do it on our own. So, so with being obedient, right. you're going to make it. That's what it takes. Being obedient, you will make it. It might, it might not.
not. And like, if, you, if you got to think it in your mind that that's the way it's going to be, you can forget it because it's not going to be like that. God is going to direct and guide the way he wants you to go. Yes, now, going around and marching around a big fortified city six or seven times don't make sense. What the world you want to march around a city seven times for, six yeah. times for, it don't make sense. And the enemy looking at you. Yeah. They're looking at you. Looking at you. You walk around and, and, and most likely it's hot. <laughs> most yeah. likely it's hot. And with, with it being in this region, yeah. most likely it's hot. You walk around this city seven times. Yeah. And, and, and you're tired. You're going to get tired. And, and it didn't say, it didn't say a whole lot about what they had to eat outside the city. That's right. Right. What they had to drink outside the city. Right. We know that we know that Jordan River is close, but it doesn't say anything about that. But God was asking me one thing. Mm -hmm. Commit to me. Commit. Do what I ask you to do. That's it. It is just showing us all that is done to bring us into being obedient yep. to what God said. Mm -hmm. Now see. Obedience is better than anything else. See now, that was that was we might be not but they wouldn't go obey what God did. If they run around and did what he said, obedience is bad. Yes. I mean we might say, oh no, no, no. Obedience is what makes you make it. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what makes you make it. You know, what I'm saying the obedience of what? Obedience what God said. Yes. Now if you didn't hear what God said, they know what God said it, they know what you wanted that what that but if you know that and he told you that and you don't want to obey it, you ain't no Well, in our day and time, we have the word of God. But back then, and, and, and Joshua and Moses, they, they, they heard the voice of God. Yeah, and that's, that's a big difference. Yeah. Amen. With God, God, a lot of times, God spoke to them out of the cloud. Yeah. Sometimes he spoke to them by, by thunder. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. by lightning. Yeah. Amen. In different ways that God talked to the uh, to your ears grow back then, yeah. but to us, it's through, through his word. Yeah. And his word is what? It's life. It's spirit. Mm -hmm. So being obedient to the word is being obedient right. to God. Obedient. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? So mm -hmm. only one, one other thing I, I'd like to add to that. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given you Jericho into your hands. Mm -hmm. now, now, God shows us through our life as, as being a parent, as being a parent. When your child obeys you, when your child does as you ask them, mm -hmm. when, when, they, when they follow your command, uh -huh. right. and, and the things that they want, you're willing to give them. Right. You're willing to with give love. Them. With love. Automatically. With love. Right. With no hesitation. No hesitation. <laughs> no. Whereas when, when they're disobedient, you want to hold them yeah. back yeah. Right. until they can understand obedience. Obedience. All right. Understand. Right. And, and, and listen to what you're saying. It, don't we serve an awesome God? Don't we serve a loving God? Even when Adam and Eve were disobedient right. to the command, he still had an emergency backup plan in place for him. Yeah. That's the kind of God we serve. Right. That's the kind of God we love because he always got an emergency backup plan for him. Right. And I don't care what it is, if you disobey God, he got a way out for you. Right. Amen. He always had a way out. Always. I don't always. care what it is. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's just like just like us being a parent. Yeah. We're going to love our kids unconditionally. Even if they gave on. Yeah. But but at the same time, if you want what, if, if there's something that you want, you got to be obedient to my word. That's right. And, and, and that's more than right. That's right. Amen. Right. That's more than right. If I had to be obedient to my parents, which I wouldn't have at the time. I want my kids to be obedient towards me, which they wouldn't at the time. Yeah. So that's just the way it is. Yeah. We have to learn that obedience yeah. is better than a sacrifice. It's, it's right. going to take you further than you can imagine. Oh my God. Give you more than you can imagine. Yes, sir. Anything else in verse 2? Uh, well, and, and when he said, uh, I have given Jericho into your hands. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. it's, it's king and it's mighty men of battle. It's, it's, te it's, telling Josh it's telling Joshua right now, right now, the king and the men of battle of Jericho are already defeated. That, that's exactly what he's saying. The city's already taken. It's all it's yours. It's yours. I told you. Oh, you have to follow this command. <laughs> simple right. as that. Ooh, ooh, is that. Is it that simple? Let me read that. Let me, 
Those of you that's going to continue to stay with it, let me read that again because he brought out something that I didn't quite see. This is what it says in verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto I have given unto thy hand Jericho. I give it to you. It's yours. It's already there. Yeah. All you got to do is do what I tell you to do and do it like I tell you to do it because I'm telling you to do it for a reason and you're going to be victorious. Amen. Amen. But if I do believe they, if they uh, disobey just one way off, mm -hmm. it rests on everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody has to be on what? One call. One call. One call. Man. If a builder is building a building and he lays out a blueprint, he follows the blueprint. <laughs> God just gave a blueprint. Follow the blueprint. The, the blueprint that Jericho built the fort, God got the blueprint to bring it down. To bring it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To give it in Joshua's hand. Oh, so man. what you saying, and, and this walk of life is two blueprints. Mm -hmm. The one that God builds you up with, mm -hmm. and when you disobedient, the other blueprint is what? To bring you down. Yeah. 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 I mean, just as he built you up, he can bring you back down. Right. I think that's one problem that, that, that we have as men is we, we, we get built up and we, we know that God built us up. Then we get to that point and it's like, I'm on top of the world. No, 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 no. I don't want you on top of the world. I want you to go back down into the valley. Yeah. You have to go back down into the valley and have somebody else get to the top. Yeah, get to right? the top. You can't stay up here by yourself. Uh, I'll bring you up here and sit you down when I'm ready to. But until I'm ready to, keep on doing my work. Keep on obeying what it is. I keep on listening to my man. Uh -huh. Woo! You know, you know he, he always have a way out for us. I'm saying this now. Yes. You know, he always have a way out for us. But it's something that we got to hear what he said. I'm going to show you this. When we do that, talk about it. When we do that, he'll come in and do something. But only in the scripture it says it. He wasn't talking about somebody that didn't know about God. He was talking about somebody that didn't know God. He said, if we confess our sins, mm -hmm. he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to come to from all our unrighteous. See, he wasn't talking about somebody that wasn't right. Yeah. He talked about somebody that was right. Mm -hmm. but, but you want to have a, a, a confession of like say, well, I ain't getting no confess. Yeah. And God will come in there and forgive you and keep you from all your own righteousness. Yeah. Amen. And make you right. Amen. Right back again. Amen. I mean, that that is in, in your confession, your son. You know, sometimes we do wrong, but what do we do? We all oh, hey, hey, no. But we, we, we can't do that. Amen. Be like David. We got to confess. Mm -hmm. And when we got to come clean, huh? That's right. And, and he makes you right back over. Oh, look at what was going on. Look at what was going on. All you have to do is confess and ask God to forgive him. Mm -hmm. And God will come right in there and forgive him. That was a sentence. And come to him all in our life. He can't say we're talking about somebody who wasn't saying. Amen. Yep. All in our life. Mm -hmm. He making me back like he was. Oh, yeah. my God. What did all he said? Oh, my God. Amen. Yes, Verse yes. 3. And you shall compass the city. All you men of war, uh -huh. and go round about the city once. Uh -huh. Thus shall thou do six days. Uh -huh. that, don't, that don't make sense. Now I'm, I'm reading this and looking at this stuff. What in the world Joshua is telling these people to go around the city once a day, six days? It's the reason for that. You better give them to the come to be obedient. That's all it is. Obedience is better than that. I'm going to see if you're going to fight them all. Obedience. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's it. If you get off, if, if they have messed up one time, uh, even if they want to attack the city, uh, they got right. like, yeah, yeah. I do believe that. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm, 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 I'm come out of these verse 4. <laughs> now, verse 4 says, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. Uh -huh. 
Wait a minute. You got to go pay that. Wait a minute. What in the world do the priests have to do with this invasion? Well, the priests the priest are the ones who are, are, I mean, their job is to be close to God. Their, their, their job is to worship God. Their, their job is to praise God. They and, are the and, spiritual part of the operation. Yes, right, See, yes. it's two sides to us. Amen. Right. We, 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 flesh and blood, mm -hmm. and then, and then the spiritual side of yeah, us. Right. We can't do anything without God. Amen. Right. Amen. I, I, and me thinking this, now, that maybe I'm wrong, but, but I don't know. And then at the same time, the priests were the only ones that could carry it off. Ah, the man in the war couldn't touch it. They couldn't touch it. Amen. And, and, and that's where the holiness of, uh, the holiness of God was. It was in that ark. Yes, it was. And, and, and remember, I don't know who it was, but uh, they were taking the, uh, in the Book of Kings, they were taking the ark somewhere, and they were marching along with it, carrying And one of the men that was carrying that ark, he stumbled mm -hmm. and was getting ready to fall. And, and one of the bystanders went to grab it so it wouldn't fall to the ground, and then he struck dead. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he wasn't supposed to touch it. That was only for the priest to do that. And it's only holy. That's right. So look, so back to the back to the why is the priest playing part of this? Because they was the spiritual mm -hmm. part of the operation. Right. You cannot do anything without God. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Uh, that's the way. Yeah. Nothing without God. Yeah. I don't care how bad you are, how strong you are, how tough you are, because we just got to read where it said, the man of what valor? Man of that, uh, yes, men of valor. A man of war? They know how to fight. Yeah. But they can't be victorious. They can't be done. <laughs> That's about the right. way they can win. That's about the way they can win. And without the priest leading the way, see, they had to lead the way. Mm -hmm. now, the, now, the spiritual part of what, you know, God has to be in front. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, well, now we can be well, yeah, and, and the other thing is, you got seven priests. Seven priests. Seven trumpets. Seven trumpets. On the seventh day. On the seventh day. Seven mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we talked about seven and completion. Seven is completion. That's it. Completion. Seven. What well, day you know, some of you used to say eight days a week? Ain't no such thing as eight days a week. No. It's seven. seven days a week. Seven. Seven. Seven, seven. seven. seven days complete a week. <laughs> seven <laughs> priests are going to complete this mission. That's exactly it. Yeah. Seven yeah. trumpets. And once, the, and once the priest has done their thing, once the priest has led the way, once they uh, uh, went around and blew the trumpet, then they was going to withdraw. Mm -hmm. They going to get out of the way. Yeah. Then that's when the war started. Yeah. But now if Joshua never would have went ahead of the priest, mm -hmm. the holiness of God, they got whooped so bad, and it would have been running back like little rats uh, mm -hmm. going back in the hole, yeah. running.
we need to move. If the trumpet didn't, if the trumpet didn't blast, then you don't move. No, you don't move. All right. Now remember Jesus talking about in the fifth, fifth, fifth chapter of St. John, somewhere along in there, he said, on that great day, it's going to be a sound of the trumpet, and it's going to blast from one end of the earth to the other end. That's a command. Yes. That the dead, that everybody that has fallen asleep in the Lord, what? Shall come forth, shall hear the sound of the trumpet. The trumpet represents a command and an authority. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh, Lord, I'm just yes, yes, that book. And yes, to make it real simple, <laughs> very simple that book. When you're watching football this weekend or whenever you're watching, the play can't start until the referee blows his whistle. Blow his whistle. Can't start. It's time. And you go out there, if you go out there and start playing without the, without the sound of the whistle if you want to, well, then they're going to send you right back to the sideline. Like, uh, <laughs> it ain't time. Uh, it ain't time. <laughs> Obedience is right. better than a sacrifice. Let me be first five again. I didn't have to get in there. Then it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall, shall uh, shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat. Wait a minute. We heard the sound of the trumpet. We know that's the authority. Let's mm -hmm. give them the okay. Mm -hmm. But what do the people shouting have to do with it? The shout. <laughs> Continue to stay with us because I, I want to say this. 
Now, the walls was, some of them in certain areas where some was 20 feet tall. It depended on what side of the city you was on. Some was 18 feet tall. But, but the scripture text said it fell flat down. Mm -hmm. It didn't crumble down. No, it fell flat down. Now, I want to ask you a question. Did the walls fall inward or did they fall outward? Well, what do you think? It seemed that the walls would fall out. He just opened it up. Like if, if we if we open a can or something, we open it. Can we, we, got, we got to rip it back. Got to, got to pull it back. Pull it back. Yeah, that's the only way. Flat down. Flat down. That, that. They went down this way. They went flat down. Flat down. This way they went. This way. Praise the Lord. Well, either, either way it went, either way it went, it went down. We don't know for sure which way it went down, but this is just a number of discussion. I'm saying, in my thinking and reading and studying the scripture, it had to go flat out. Now, if it fell flat in, that means a whole lot of people died, were smushed and crumbled and everything. The, it was the, the houses and everything were, just, everything were destroyed. But if you fall outward, that means it was easier for the invasion yeah. to go in. Even mm -hmm. God. I just thought they went, that. They went down. I just, I just thought we were going to throw that out and, and just praise God. So verse 6, I, amen, praise the Lord. Okay, so Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priest and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant. And let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord. And now they're taking up the covenant. Yeah. They're taking up God's covenant. They didn't invade it. They, they went in and took over the city. Mm -hmm. It stands like the Lord promised them. Mm -hmm. And we got to do what he said for all the time. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priest and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant. And let seven priests got seven trumpets of lambs on uh, before the ark of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it. Now the priests had withdrawn, they got out of the way now. The invasion has begun. Now it's time for them to take up the ark of the covenant now and, be, and begin to go forth now. What's that verse 6 you on? That's verse 6. Go to what verse 7 said. And, and he Bible. said to the people, proceed and march around the city. Let him who was armed advance before the ark of the Lord. Okay, so 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 it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horn before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets in the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed. Okay, so now now it's telling the action that they had taken. Joshua he already told the people what what God had told him. He he commanded them to do. Amen. And that's the one through five. And then it goes on to explain what the people did and how. How they did, how they obeyed the world. Right. They how they obeyed. Obeyed. Obedience is better than yeah. yeah. a sacrifice. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And verse, let me see. And I'm going to read verse 8. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horn passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpet and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Verse 9, and the armed men went before the priests that blew the trumpet and the reward, what? Rear guard. Rear guard came after the ark and the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. One more time, verse 10, and Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you to shout. Then shall you shout. That's the command. Yeah. Yeah. You don't do anything until I tell you. Right. And I do believe, when we get ready to close out, I do believe if the people would not have obeyed Joshua, every word, every command, they would not took that city. No, no. no. Now, now, now imagine, imagine walking around this city, you walking around this city once a day, for six days, be quiet, don't say a word. If you step on something, don't say a word. <laughs> don't say a word. Now that's, 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 that's being very obedient. So if you walk around that city, six days, one time a day, so not say day. one word. And on the seventh day, when I tell you to shout, you shout. Don't, not before. 
not be fooled. This is a command now. This is being obedient. That's right. And, and the reason why we lose a lot of our blessings, and the reason why we can't be blessed and be blessed on time, is because when the preacher tells us something, the pastor tells us something, it's, th it's because we think they just want to say this to be saying, no, he's telling you for a reason. Right. And when he tells you that for a reason, then you have to be obedient, obedient. to him that God is telling him what to tell you. Right. Now, if they say somebody would say, step on the water and say, ouch! Yeah. That would mess up the whole thing. Yeah. You just shout it out. You just shout it out before time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Hey, now we get to the next point. Now, all of this blowing the trumpet, all of this marching around the city six and seven times, once a day for six days, all of that, do you not know? Now, years ago, we remember the ride by shoes? Remember when the car ride by real slow, and they turn the corner, they circle the block, yeah, they are. and people get scared. You know what kind of uh, mental thing that put in their mind? They're going to open fire on us. They're going to, yeah. people getting ready to run and duck and dodge. That's a mental thing. And that's exactly what God was putting on uh, the city of, of Jericho. He was, it was a mental thing. Yeah. They couldn't figure out what in the world they doing. Well, well I, I think the first mental, mental aspect to that was them crossing the Jordan. It's no way those children of Israel, Israel are going to get past the Jordan River. We, we, we protect they yeah. have to let that gate down, they can do whatever they want to. Once they saw that they got over the river Jordan, wait a minute. It was on. Wait a minute. We got to put it. Secure it. Secure it. Secure it. Yeah. Some, some, somebody right here. Mm -hmm. And then and they coming, but they not attacking. Yeah. Why are they not attacking? Mm -hmm. and why are they marching around the city? Mm -hmm. Why are they blowing the horns? Mm -hmm. I mean, why don't they come on and fight us? What, yeah, what's up with that? It's a mental thing. Mm -hmm. And when we don't praise God and worship God and do what's he supposed to do, it, it, it's a mental thing on our behalf. Because we know yeah. what so we're not doing. That's it. No, 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 no. God bless you. Oh, yeah. Anything else before we close out? I know we way over our hour. I don't know, brother. We're not over our hour? Well, we're going to get ready to close it out anyway. <laughs> Amen. We just thank God for oh, yeah. this young pastor preaching. Oh, yeah. Coming from the big city of Yoakum, Texas. The pastor of the St. John's Church in Yoakum, Texas, doing that stunning job. Every once in a while, he'll call me and say hello. I'll call him and say hello. He's doing an outstanding job. I asked him how his church doing in Yoko. He said he's growing, but he need a little more man of God. A war. I need mean, a man of God. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got to have a little valor in you. Yeah. You got to have a little boy. A little war for a little out of God. <laughs> Let God work with you. Let God work with you. Let God work with you. Let God me in that in St. John and Yoko. And thank God for El Brazil, my, my, my close friend, my associate that's with me every step of the way. And thank God for him and the cameraman. Again, I, we can't say anything without thanking him because he's the one making all this possible. Amen. Amen. And it's hard work. And he's behind the scene and his work don't end here. He got to go home, stay up all night trying to put all this together oh, and put it on the internet. Amen. And, and, and I know he's going to ring my neck sometime. Yeah. I want it done right here. Yeah. We're working through it. Amen. God bless you. And those of you that's going to uh, continue to stay with us and, and continue to tune in on our website or by YouTube, we just thank God for you that you take the time out. Amen. And, and just share with us the word of God. This is what this is all about. We don't yeah. know nothing. But it's Jesus Christ that yeah. leads the way. That's it. Yeah. Amen. And God bless you. God love you. And God keep you is our prayer. God bless you. Go in peace. Love you. So do God. God bless you. Amen.